Hello Pirate fans, my name is Matt Ambrose and welcome to a brand new edition of Hall Talk. My panel and I will discuss all the latest in spring sports in just a moment, but first some exciting news came across for both men's and women's basketball this past week. First, the men's basketball team has hired Tony Skin as assistant coach, filling the void left by Shaheen Holloway, who left for the head coaching job at St. Peter's. Skin was a starting guard on the 2006 George Mason team that made an improbable run to the Final Four as an 11 seed. Skin was most recently an assistant at Louisiana Tech for the last three seasons. The men have also begun the process of building their non-conference schedule, securing a showdown with the Kentucky Wildcats at Madison Square Garden sometime in early December. It will be just the third meeting of all time between the two schools, with the last matchup coming all the way back in 1988. On the women's side, Tony Bazella has secured two transfers for the upcoming season in Sharice Wilson from Rhode Island, as well as Alexis Lewis from Iona. While Lewis will have to sit out the upcoming season due to transfer rules, Wilson comes in as a grad transfer who averaged 17 points per game in 84 career games with the Rams. My panel and I will explore all of these topics as well as the latest in baseball and softball. This is Hall Talk. Welcome back to Hall Talk. I'll now introduce my panel for this evening, Bob Tui and Frank Frasco. Guys, what's going on? Nothing much. Glad to be here. Glad it's finally getting warm in New Jersey. Of course. It's great to be here, Matt. Absolutely. Looking forward to it. So a couple of those things we talked about off the top, uh, the basketball news, Tony Skin uh, as the assistant coach, the, the matchup with Kentucky, and also the women's basketball transfers coming in. Frank, I'll start with you. Which one of those three storylines stands out to you the most? I want to bring up Kentucky, another SEC team that the Pirates can inflate face. Uh, Florida was two years ago, and they faced in Orlando, Florida itself. Um, it's great for the market of, of Seton Hall right now. Uh, last year, they, pl they played a couple of good teams, Texas Tech, Louisville, and it's a good test for the Pirates to go into MSG right before the Big East uh, games start to come out and just really do a great job. Bob. Let's move over to women's basketball. Alexis Lewis may not be able to play this coming season, but she's a thousand point scorer for Iona. The Pirates have a really big asset in her. And then looking at Sharice Wilson, team captain for Rhode Island, three point threat, led the team in points her senior or junior year rather. Uh, a three point threat isn't something that the Pirates have had consistently over the last handful of seasons. So I think bringing her on to solidify everything beyond the arc, I think it's a really good move. So we'll see how those storylines shape up throughout the year. But right now, it's the middle of spring sports. Baseball season is in full swing. The baseball team's off to a great start in Big East play. Five and one off the bat in Big East play. Recently, a sweep over the weekend at Butler out in Indianapolis. Started off on Friday, a 6-1 to one win over the Butler Bulldogs in that one. And that was a strong performance led by Shane McCarthy. Seven innings, six hits, just one run given up in that game. And that's a huge sign for this Seton Hall starting rotation to get McCarthy back on track because this starting staff has really had its fair share of struggles over the last couple of, a couple of games or a couple of weeks, really. But to see McCarthy get back on track, not just that start on, uh, on Friday against Butler, but a start before that as well is a great sign for Rob Shepard and his yeah, crew. Yeah, definitely is. He had a season high uh, seven innings pitched uh, for the Pirates. And let's not forget about the offensive production and Rob Madonna having a three run blast uh, in the middle of that game. But the great bullpen at the end with Sawyer and Leon coming in, they allowed one hit in two innings. Um, and, they and Leon actually struck out the side in that game. So just a great job of the bullpen who's really been stepping up and just been key for this Pirates team. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I, Shane McCarthy, that was arguably his best game of the season. He struck at, like, you, you can't even say what they need in right. pitching. If, if he's not there, this team's gone, right? So he has right. to be the guy who steps up. But then you look at Ricky DeVito playing in the game on Saturday. Eight strikeouts, eight innings, the guy had a huge game. So if they can get two pitchers kind of on that same level, uh, consistent and carrying the team like that, they're going to be in good shape. That's Abs why they're second. Absolutely. You bring up DeVito, Big East pitcher of the week, DeVito was named. You mentioned eight innings of shutout baseball, had eight strikeouts in the 3 nothing win on Saturday against Butler. So to have that duo of, of starting pitchers in this rotation, McCarthy and DeVito, two strong outings over the weekend, you have to think that this is a good sign this is what this team needs, having those two strong arms in the front of this rotation 
that's going to lead this team throughout the rest of Big East play. Because right now, 5-1, and one, they're sitting in a pretty good spot. Well, it just shows you what Shepard has done with this uh, bullpen. You know, DeVito last season as a freshman made 12 appearances last year all in relief. And let's not forget, in 15 innings that he pitched, he only he allowed zero earned runs. And this season with a 1.97 ERA as a starting pitcher right now for the Pirates. Um, you know, on Saturday, that was the longest outing of the season for any Pirates pitcher so far this season in eight innings. And to only allow four hits against a Butler team that averages 12 hits so far uh, in conference, it was just a great job by DeVito, the sophomore, just stepping up. At the same time, you got to keep in mind, Butler is a team that has four players with more than 20 RBIs. Right. See, you know how many Seton Hall has over 20 RBIs? One. That's insane exactly. to me. The, the disparity between those two teams, and Seton Hall is still above them in the standings, and now they're pitching, shutting out a team like Butler. It's going to give Seton Hall a chance to battle in conference play, no doubt. The game on Sunday was a 7-5 victory for the Pirates against Butler in that one. Billy Lane, only four innings in that one. He's kind of had a, a little bit of a struggle over his last couple of outings. Uh, but really the bullpen came through at the end of that one to give them the victory. But we talk about the offense for Seton Hall. You mentioned Rob Dodonna earlier, Frank. Big East weekly honor roll for Dodonna this week. Went 8 for 14 in the series against Butler with six RBIs at a leadoff spot. He was absolutely huge. But now moving forward, Villanova upcoming this weekend. 0-6 Villanova is in Big East play so far. The Pirates have them this weekend at home at ONT Carroll Field. So this is really a good chance for Seton Hall to really solidify themselves, put themselves yeah. in a comfortable spot. You know, the top four qualify for the Big East tournament. If they can get maybe two out of three, perhaps a sweep this, this weekend, they could be in a pretty comfortable spot looking at the Big East tournament. Picture. I can't agree with you more. I mean, just going back to the, the third game of that series, um, the senior, Leon, he had two perfect innings. It was the sixth day of the season for the senior. Uh, Pretty much a closer for this Pirates team. He only uh, he only has four earned runs this season, guys. And the last one was against Florida Atlantic University almost two months ago. So this closer has been on fire. Let, let's not forget about Matt Leon, the senior closer for this Pirates team. But there is no doubt that the Pirates' this upcoming weekend into next week should be 4-0. They're playing a, a team, a Villanova team that's lost seven consecutive games. And they're also playing a St. Peter's team that's 0-30 in this season so far, 0 for 30. So they should be 4-0 by next Wednesday, definitely. Yeah, I mean, for sure. This baseball team has a lot of momentum going for them right now. But also, let's look at the softball team as well. Hasn't exactly gone as planned for them so far. Losers of six straight, seven of their last eight, just got swept over the weekend by the first place Creighton Blue Jays. But in two of those games, first game and the third game of that series, they were right in it. Those were the games that Reagan Camp pitched Game one, they lost 2-1. to one. That was a pitcher's duel. And then game three, a 5-3 to three loss for the Pirates in that one. But it just shows you again and again how Reagan Camp has been the ace for this, this softball pitching staff throughout the year. She's been really the one to lead the charge uh, for this team throughout the year, really. Yeah, there's really only been five pitchers for the Seton Hall softball team. And Camp, with less than 24 hours rest between game one and game three, because it was a two-day, three-game uh, series, you can't expect... But she still pitched two complete games. Right. And, of course, you know, didn't get the wins. But that first loss, to, you know, she had zero earned runs in game one. And to have that loss on her resume really is not fair for that pitcher. Because she's been the main pitcher for this Pirates team. And it's just unfair that she had to get that one loss. There's no doubt. I mean, when you compare her to probably the second best start on the team, Madison Strunk, you look at the strikeouts, you look at ERA, there is a mile-long gap between those statistics. And Madison Strunk's very good. Yeah. But... Let's talk about something else, right? This team has gotten mercy ruled in back-to-back -back series. When that happens, there is a fundamental problem with the team. And I think this team right now is showing that relying on freshman talent alone or the brunt of their scoring coming from freshman talent, it's not sustainable. And they're going to need a lot more veteran presence to step up than they've been seeing right now. It's, it's just not going to lead the rest of the way any better than what we've seen. So what do you think that they can do to really turn this around? I mean, you look, uh, I'm glad you brought up the veteran leadership on this team. Alexis Walkton hasn't had a home run since back on March 27th against Fairfield. That's, that's for her, that's a pretty long uh, home run drought. The team's hitting just 205 in Big East play. What can they really do? They head into Villanova on the road this upcoming weekend. What do you think that this team can do to turn it around? They have to come out strong in the beginning. I mean, we saw Pendolfo in game three come out with, in the bottom of the first inning with a, a home run and really got the job going. So they need to come out strong offensively because 
in the, before this series and the last four games before the series against Creighton, they had not scored in the first four innings of each game. So to have to come back from behind, it's a struggle this Pirates team has faced. So they have to realize that they have to come out early offensively. I'm not that optimistic, and here's why. <laughs> you saw Janae Barricado, you saw Peyton Beaver, you saw Haley Arteaga, right? They are three underclassmen. They were leading the way to the halfway mark of the season, let's say, right? Uh, and, and now we've just seen a lot of things start to fizzle. I think they might have expended their energy too soon. I think maybe they didn't understand their own strength and kind of burned out before the halfway mark of this season hit. And now, you know, the veterans haven't had such a chance to get in a rhythm. The freshmen are looking a little bit tired. The, the pitching's not really where it should be. So I'm saying, what can you do? You know, what can you do? Teams will try and turn it around this weekend again on the road against Villanova. The baseball team trying to keep the, the train moving. Five and one in Big East play. They're at home against Villanova. Three games upcoming this weekend. He's Frank Frasco. He's Bob Tui. My name is Matt Ambrose. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Hall Talk. Stay tuned for a new episode next week.